the things that you really want to know is why do I have an angle set? Why the altitude over the slayer? I'll leave my suspension settings in the comments. So when you're down there, you can go leave yourself a comment and click that like button because I think it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm. Hate saying that, but just the way it is. I'm worse at cornering than I am at riding steep stuff. So if that helps me in cornering and I have a little bit of a disadvantage in the steeps, that kind of balances out my strengths. going on this is what everyone has been asking for and meaning to do it for a while but me and Rocky wanted to keep that 2020 frame with the signatures on it on their wall kind of as part of their history and that uh, maybe if they ever get a showroom it'll be put up there but they've got a lot of cool bikes there which is really cool um, so I've been waiting to get this one which is obviously the other 2021 frame um, it's this sweet purple and whatever hot red pink and black and it's pretty attractive looking. The things that you really want to know is why do I have an angle set? What have I changed with this bike? And why should you still buy this bike? So let's get started. First of all, Altitude versus Slayer. Um, they're definitely both very different bikes. They're, they're similar, they got that rocky feel. They're, they pedal really well on the climbs for both of them. They're quite agile and active. They're really fun to ride. Slayer, I really liked when I first got on it. I thought it just like ate up everything in the trail and I could kind of do whatever I wanted on it. And that was really good. And so in my mind, I was thinking like, okay, this bike will be super sweet to race with the EWS because I don't have to kind of be scared about all the steep sections and kind of getting out of control because it was really just really planted and it can kind of do whatever I wanted and would save me a lot of circumstances. When I got on the altitude, I still felt that, but it was just a lot more of like, just a race weapon. Like it just it takes a bit more maybe for this to kind of go faster. Like you have to be more on it. But once you do that, it just, this thing just carries speed so well. It corners really well. It can attack the descents. And then it's an overall lighter, more pedal friendly package in the Slayer. And that is a huge thing when we're pedaling for seven hours for an enduro day. So that was definitely weighing on my mind. Um, I actually had Slayer packaged in a box ready to ship out to Europe in case I had any issues with the altitude, but that never happened. Once I got this on the EWS tracks, I was blown away at how good it really was. And of course, everyone's going to talk about the fact that I have an angle set or this custom chip or this custom chip. Those haven't changed yet because honestly, I just haven't really been testing as much this winter yet because we have a delayed season. So I've kind of just been enjoying my winter and I have four months still to be on the bike and start testing. So. That's gonna be coming up soon, but this was kind of based around the suspension that we were running at the time, the rear end. Because this bike is longer for me, and I was a little bit worried about that, the long rear end is a bit too long, but I really like the way that that felt. And the short rear end is, I mean, it's good. Like once I put it in that short rear end, it really feels like the old uh, 29 inch stick that we were riding. And it's just, it's really quick around corners. It's, it's got really good feedback and you can jump it through trails really well. But I wanted, I wanted more of that, planted, stable feeling of the long chip. So without going too long, we just went in the middle because easier. I'm sure we could pick a more perfect millimeters, but uh, yeah, that. So that's sitting at like 443-ish, which is the same as the Slayer, which is what I said, like the Slayer rear end felt really good. So I wanted to match that. Um, and that just happened to be really good. Uh, I think that's a cool option. And then this chip, same kind of thing, you know, with the ride down, it changes different characteristics of the bike. And, you know, I said, and this is true, like, placebo or not, you know, the racer's mind is interesting and I do a lot of testing before I get to racing, but once racing happens, I really don't want to be overthinking things. And so this in my mind theoretically was the perfect position. I'm sure position three or position two would have been totally fine, but I just wanted to like, that was my position. I liked that it was different and I was like, yeah, this is cool. And it worked for the first race. So I was like, well, I'm not going to change it, but I do imagine I'll be, I'll be changing that for the coming season. Just to get back to like the stock ride of the bike. And then the angle set, twofold. Bike sizing is still kind of trying to find its foot of where it really wants to be. This bike, you know, I've gone from a 430-ish, like 420s reach on the Instinct 29er to the Slayer, which I was on for a bit, which is like 442, 446, depending on the position. And this thing is a 450. So like it's a really big difference for me and I was worried about that. So I had the angle set signaling around from the Instinct that I was previously riding. So I threw that in because that shortens the, the reach a little bit, which I wanted. It also slackens the bike. Which I think the head angle on this bike is actually perfect in the stock settings, but because it's slackened it, that's why I'm not running position one or two because those are 
too slack with the angle set, in my opinion, like for EWS. And so I, I wanted to go up a bit. So that's why I would have liked to be in position three, but I preferred the suspension characteristics of position two. So that's why I'm in the middle of those two. So that's kind of like balancing each other out. And again, it's one of those things where I put that in, bike felt good, I was doing well, so I didn't really want to change it kind of mid-season. But that going forward, I'm going to try just to do a straight up reach adjust, which I didn't have at the time, but I've since bought. So I'll try to reach adjust and then doing that, hopefully I can go back to, you know, probably position two or one, depending on which one I feel is better. And that's kind of why I'm on the angle set. It's, it's not like the bike is bad out of the box. I just change things and I get it stuck in my mind and it's just the way I want to do it. And Rocky's been really good uh, with us for this bike, allowing us to do that. The custom chips was amazing. Like that was that was really cool that they would do that. And I feel like a lot of race teams get that treatment. And in other sports, you see like a crazy amount of mods being done to bikes. And I think it's cool that these things you can pretty much buy off the shelf. And it's it's the same thing. I mean, you can put an angle set in this chip. Maybe you can't really do, but whatever. <laughs> the other big thing that people have commented on is this old 2020 shock. The only reason is we didn't have any of these lying around in this shock size, but we had one for the Slayer. So it was a 2020 shock. I got it resized by Fox so it fit this bike and I just haven't gotten the new 2021 stuff yet. So that's the only reason that it's not like I like this better. I haven't had a chance to try the new one yet. I'm sure it's good. Grammy and Aileen both have it and they both really like it. So I'll be on that. Next, the fork. Uh, that's kind of new for this year. And 38 was really sick. Like just really good steering inputs. It's possible that it's a bit too stiff for me in my weight. And we just went straight to the 38, but it was just what we were given at the time. And I've obviously really enjoyed it. And it suits my style of really just monster trucking through things and having that stability and able to just like, I'm, I'm strong so I can get through it. And I just want that to be straight plowing through things. So it really worked. But I think I'm also going to try to go the 36 and see if it's maybe more suitable to my weight. Cause I'm, I'm a small guy I might not need the 38 and just for like all day pedaling that weight difference might be uh advantageous so we'll see about that otherwise everything else is pretty much the same as a slayer like obviously ask the guy in the front 2.5 double down uh wide trail that thing i've talked about that in a few videos it's just really good traction everywhere um it rolls a little bit slower but i'd rather have traction rather than the speed because if you can just go fast on your tire because it rolls quickly but you don't have confidence then you can't actually go that fast so this one i like i'm very confident that i can go as fast as i want which is generally faster than you ever want to because you're going to be braking. But then I know that I have the traction going into rough sections or corners and stuff. And then the DHR2, I just like because of the braking. Again, I have a style of just like braking as late as possible into things. And this is really good at just like anchoring down. Uh, same thing. It's a 2.5. It was a prototype at some point, but I think that doesn't look like it is anymore. So yeah, both max grip just because it wears away quick, but we get to change tires. So that max grip is just really good on all sorts of terrain. Shimano is pretty much bone stock. I like to run the small cassette because I prefer to have less strong weight back here. 10 to 45, 12 speed with a 32 tooth chain up front. Um, you can see I, I still have the stages power meter on my bike, which is, you don't necessarily see it. I use it like in the races. Sometimes on transitions, I'll know like, how much power is too much power. I generally look at my heart rate just to kind of keep it under a certain zone, but power is kind of good to go back. Like you see how much you output in a race and then for training, you can kind of try to replicate that. And that's a really good tool just to see how much you're doing. Crank by the pedals, these are freshies, which is sweet. I found that these have a really good platform like when you're not clipped in, which I really like. Brakes, just 203 mil rotors, the Trail XTR four piston brakes, which is sweet. Wheels, same as the Slayer. We got the Turbine Rs. These wheels have been really sweet. They hold up pretty well to abuse. Like they'll dent if they need to, but so far they don't really just dent way too much and you flat because of that. It's really good that they only dent a little bit <laughs> and that might sound bad, but like when we're racing, we're missing lines, we're smashing through things and it's good to have a wheel that's gonna hold up throughout that abuse and just get you to the end of the race. and. I don't want to jinx myself and say anything, but they've done very well in the past. So I'm, I'm really happy with those and the vault hubs as well, like no issues. So that's been super sweet. Same as Slayer, that 40 mil stem on, which I talked about in my podcast on the downtown podcast. And that was an interesting one because you would think I went to a longer bike. So I shortened my stem, but after a conversation with Bryn Atkinson, who says like, he just thinks 40 mil stems are like ideal length. I put it on and I did really like it. For sure, I felt more stretched out, which kind of affected me on the steep sections, but 
just put me in a much better position. And for me, I'm worse at cornering than I am at riding steep stuff. So if that helps me in cornering and I have a little bit of a disadvantage in the steeps, that kind of balances out my strengths. So I think that's kind of good. And at EWS, when you're riding half blind or whatever with one practice run, it's good to just have really good confidence in corners and be able to carry your speed because that's where races are pretty much won and lost. That's why Sam Hill does so well. This is new for this year. We got the Reform Saddle. So this is really cool. I met these guys. They actually make custom titanium road bikes, which is sick. And I met them at a road race where I actually crashed and snapped my road bike. So um, we ended up talking and I was gonna get a new bike from them. <clears throat> and then they said they're coming up with these new saddles and these are really cool. So they are custom molded to your sit bones, which is super helpful because this is, you know, it's a super sturdy carbon shell and that could be uncomfortable, but because you mold it to your sit bones, it's actually way more comfortable. And then you're keeping that efficiency and that pedaling power to your bike, which is really sweet and then it's just yeah we're spending so long in the saddle that I feel like most of the time like you just don't think about your saddle and you just you really get used to it I don't know what that is but I've also obviously gotten used to my saddles in the past and I've run that WTB Silverado for seven or eight years and had no issues this is kind of a cool new technology that was uh really cool to give it a give it a chance and I liked it so um they partnered with the team which is awesome yeah we're currently designing a new mountain bike saddle for them which will come with titanium rails because we don't want to risk snapping a seat in races so we're going to develop one with titanium rails and that'll just kind of be a little bit more mountain bike suitable but yeah that's a really cool seat I think it looks sick and those guys are rad so I'm super happy to be with them I'll leave my suspension settings in the comments so when you're down there you can go leave yourself a comment and click that like button because I think it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm hate saying that but just the way it is. The Fox transfer post, um, this is obviously fully slammed on my bike but it's perfect and that's a 175 mil drop which as soon as we're getting longer and longer like I just love that my seat's more out of the way and I go back to like a 150 mil dropper and definitely just gets gets up my up my butt a bit so <laughs> I definitely like that. Um, otherwise I think the last thing for the whole bike is we got the rad wrap on there so that's been pretty sweet. I didn't really care about my bikes in the past because I didn't want to think, oh, like protect your bike when you're in a race. So now I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it because the ride wrap just fully protects the bike and it's super amazing. Like over time, your bike gets all those little micro scratches in it. Not only does the ride wrap stop that from happening, but if you ever wanted to like take it off for resale, you take the ride wrap off and your bike is brand new. So I think it's completely worth the money. I mean, I, I know people that have done it themselves. My brother did it himself and I mean, he did it, but RadWrap engineers their pieces so that it has the least amount of like overlapping and bending in the tape, so it's much easier to put on. Like if you ever try to put on a straight like square rectangle piece of protective tape on your top tube, you know that like when you get to this point, it just gets all those creases in it and it's super shitty. So RadWrap does it so like there's all these creases here and it doesn't let that happen. So that's one of the big benefits of RadWrap for the price. It's, it's pretty cheap, honestly. Like if you're thinking about like, how much time you're putting into putting this on your bike, I think it's worth it. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. Uh, if I didn't cover something you wanted me to cover, just ask me in the comments and I'm pretty good at responding to the comments. So I'll, I'll make sure I get to all of those. But that's just a quick rundown of the altitude, LCD versus Slayer, why I'm into the angle set and all the custom stuff on the bike. But overall, this bike is obviously amazing and couldn't be more true given how my season went last year. So I'm super stoked to be heading into another season on this bike and, and see what I can do. So uh, yeah, make sure you follow along for all those race videos and let's hope we go racing this year. Cheers. Whoa, what's going on?